Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just gonna be really brief tonight. Just wanna give you a heads up on how to determine what is the difference between therapeutic essential oils and clinical grade essential oils. And why does it matter? Does anybody really care? Well, if you are an essential oils user, you wanna know why. Hey Susan. So, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Scott Johnson, you can find him on Facebook. You can find all of his books available on Amazon. He's written numerous, and he is known as the foremost expert uh, on essential oils. And I received a statement from him today uh, with respect to the difference between therapeutic grade and clinical grade essential oils. Hey, Pam. Hey, Becky. So I just thought maybe you guys should want, you'd want to know what this is. So if you're buying essential oils and you're using them regularly, you want to know what the difference is and how to find out what your oils uh, are, are doing. So that said, um, there are several standards that exist in the industry um, that, that determines the quality of essential oils. Um, there's no one universally accepted standard recognized um, by all aromatherapy companies. Um, you can get oils at Walmart, you can get them at Whole Foods, you can get them you know, through a distributor, you can get them you know, kind of anywhere really. But how do you know what you're getting? Um, the most accepted and recognized um, standard is called the AFNR standard, and it's A-F-N-O-R, and I'm reading this from Dr. Johnson's statement. It says, um, it's an association French normalization organization regulation, big fancy word, doesn't really matter. Um, and the ISO, which is the In International Organization for Standardization. Okay, what does that mean? That basically means there's at least a standard that all companies um, in the aromatherapy marketplace use as a standard. And what that means is, um, though there are these minimal standards, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've been tested for human wellness, okay? So the minimum chemical profiles are what's determined by those two organizations and the minimize and to minimize flavor and aroma changes. Okay, so for example, this is an orange that's clinical grade and this is an orange that's therapeutic grade. Well, the, the difference is, you know, they may smell similar, they may taste similar, but if they're grown in different regions of the world, say this one, for example, was grown, just as an example, grown in say the Himalayas. In the Himalayas, oranges there may have uh, more dense, nutrient-dense soil. Um, it may be just the climate differences, the environmental factors are different. And let's just say that this one grows right here in California. Okay, so the environmental factors of both of these oranges matter, right? Because not only does it smell, taste, um, and you know it's different that way, or it may, may be similar, but what is it doing to your body? Right? So we want to know what is happening from a human perspective when I put these oranges in my body, what's happening to them. Is the vitamins and nutrients in this oil or in this orange um, permeating my cells? We want to know that, right? That's what essential oils do. So the scientific community, not the government, not the FDA, not any of those factors, but the scientific community evaluates essential oils based on their beneficial properties and relies solely on the duplicability of results that confirm research findings. So if you would, and you're watching this, drop down in the comments, um, pubmed.gov, pubmed.gov. So this is the place where those scientific research studies have been published and they don't get published unless they can be duplicated. So if it can't be duplicated, it doesn't get published. So this research, for example, um, when you go to NIH or the NIH or PubMed.gov and you enter in orange essential oil, you'll see that there are over 300 articles written alone just on that essential oil. So what does the scientific community use as a standard? So there are several uh, factors, where it's grown, the climate, the water used, sunshine, elevation, pests in the area, and so many other factors, which reduces the possibility of duplicability. So the scientist has to use an essential oil, this is from Dr. S Dr. Johnson, with different um, chemical profiles. They can't duplicate it if it's got a different chemical constituent. So uh, for example, let's say, I don't know how many there are, but let's pretend that the orange has 
800 chemical constituents, and those chemical constituents are used for um, beneficial uh, reactions in the body for the for humans, right? And then let's say this one has only 400 plus some other factors that might make it not as good, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, now these team of, uh, there's a team of suppliers in the world that provides essential oils to the marketplace that is rigidly gone through to make sure that it meets these scientific standards. So there's a, a team of chemists, botanists, biologists, and other professionals um, that ensure essential oils meet these rigorous standards in order to be published and um, done for human consumption and human research on pubmed.gov, okay? So again, if it's duplicatable, then they use those scientific articles. Now, now that we know that there's a couple of standards that are used across the industry with the AFNR and the ISO standards, how do you know if you're getting something that's clinical grade? So we know that this is therapeutic grade, right? Those what those you're used for. Perfumes, etc. you wanna know that smells good, um, has consistent flavor, etc. but that's just a, a standard um, that is not compared to clinical grade. Does that make sense? Um, drop a hands up if you have questions about this and we'll figure it out together. Um, now, the scientific community has established what an orange, a lavender, peppermint essential oils should look like from a chemical constituent perspective. Put a hands up there if that makes sense. So Ameo essential oils, this company right here, Ameo sources sources these oils to meet or exceed the quality standards set forth by the scientific communi community. Wow. Okay, so most other companies out there in the marketplace don't do that. <laughs> so um, now the, of these hundreds of studies with the preference that Ameo uses is based on the human studies, not on other critters or other animals or things like that. So they call that a clinical grade standard. So Ameo meticulously evaluates, and this is from Dr. Johnson, it says we meticulously evaluate essential oils to ensure that they are produced according to the highest clinical and scientific standard so that they produce reliable results, okay? So far from use, Ameo essential oils meets precise standards leading to consistent quality purity, and preferred chemical profile. That last little line there, preferred chemical profile. So on the back or on the bottom of every single one of our, of a male batch here, oh, I can't get it to focus on that. Um, someone drop in the comments for me, this batch number, and this is for this orange essential oil by a male. Um, the lot number is 28048, 28048. Um, this was manufactured just in August of 2017. And go to the website, ameodifference.com. And there you can see the chemical top five chemical constituents, all the testing that was done, and even see a video of this essential oil permeating human cells. So I hope that explains that to you. I would be happy to share this statement from Dr. Johnson if, you would be, if you're interested in that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and we can go through all this together. So that's Nicole Connor with Fuel for Your Brain. Have a great day, guys.